it's been a while because I got a new computer because my old computer died. So I have to learn how to use all new computer software to make videos. This is going to be the first video I've made in a very long time. Wish me luck! Yay! This is the follow-up from the April 2019 spinning box, Birds of a Feather. And these are the items that came in the box and that I transformed with my own um, spinning wheel into yarn. So if you hadn't seen the unboxing video of the April 2019 spinning box, Birds of a Feather, you can find that on my YouTube channel. And I'll try to remember to link that in the description. But this is the whole collection of what I created from the spinning box. And you can see that there's some finished and semi-finished items as well. So in no particular order, I think I'll start from the biggest to the smallest, and this is not the order that I spun things in. This was the Pretty in Pink uh, 23 Micron Merino Wool, and it was a really delightful roving that came from Camage Fiber Arts, and I blended it on my blending board and turned it into roll eggs and spun, um, I'll call it a fusion. It was a combination of short forward draw and long draw because the Angora that I had dyed was various lengths and not all of them wanted to be long draw. Her fiber, which was the 23 micron merino, wanted long draw. It was just awesome like that. So I dulled the colors down just a little bit with some more mauves and a little bit of gray Angora from Max the Murder Bunny. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. It is incredibly soft. Um, oh, there's also some Fire Star in here. I forgot about that. There's orange Fire Star. I don't know how much Fire Star you're actually supposed to use when you do these things, but I think I was supposed to use a lot more. This is Green Tree Parrot from Yarn Fairy in the Pixies. And I just spun this straight. This is, again, a fine merino. I'll have to look and see which one it is and cut this out if I can. Oh, I did blend it with Angora. I blend, this is one gram of merino and 0 0.4 grams of dyed Angora. So I think that I blended this on my hand cards. Yes, indeed, I did. I blended this on my hand cards, and it is a chain plied yarn, and it is wonderfully springy. Meow, meow, meow. I love that. You gotta do the sound effect. And this also happens to be one of my best friend's favorite colorway, which I think is really funny because it's like super 1970s. And the next one, which my father likes, which is not a surprise, is the male ring-necked pheasant from Painted Harlot Fiber on Etsy.com. And this was called Fiber Synthesis. Fibers dyed in the same dye pot, so they will cohesively create a beautiful project. Um... And anyway, it created a beautiful plot project. It's Finn, Wensleydale, Gottenland, Cross, Tees, Water, and Wools with Sparkly Angelina and Dyed Silk. And I blended it on my blending board with some Romney that I had dyed, some of my English Angora, and I spun that pretty inconsistently. Um, it's sort of a thick and thin. And then I applied it with gold silk thread. So that was kind of a fun ply. Um, This is Alpaca Serenades, and it is the 
Blue Raspberry Banded Contenga as the bird inspiration. And it was an absolutely lovely spin. Um, the bat was beautiful. It smelled good. It wasn't perfumey, but it did not smell like a farmyard, which was awesome. Um, the purple and the blue were well adhered together. You know, there was no, it wasn't like the color way in the bat was falling apart at all, which is sometimes happens with colorways and bats. Um, it stri so what I did with this is I stripped it, um, and then I pre-drafted it lightly and spun the purple and blue single, which was from Alpaca Serenades, and then yet again we feature Max the Murder Bunny, and I spun his wool straight and plied the two of them together. I wasn't sure how I would like having a barber pole yarn from this, but after I washed it I'm really quite fond of it. It does not have a whole lot of memory to it. It's very drapey and soft. I mean, there's really no, like, you, there's there's no elasticity. But it is a really beautiful, soft, drapey yarn, which is great for Angora and Alpaca. And I think that there's, I think their cross also had Corydale. So it's Angora, Alpaca, and Corydale. This was Kookaburra, and I apologize, I lost the card. I don't remember anything other than Kookaburra, and I believe that their inspiration was a kingfisher from Australia. And I remember that there is Tenseal in this, and I just spun it straight. There, there's... I didn't blend anything in with it or alter the prep at all, which I was supposed to do with this particular project was altering the prep. Um, or re-blending it or deconstructing something, and I, I didn't. I just spun it straight because it was so pretty. And then I plied it from a center pole ball, but also with the gold silk thread. So it has ended up to be a three-ply, but from a center pole ball, which is kind of interesting. Um, and it is beautifully soft. I'm not entirely happy with my ply. I have a few areas where the yarn, the the silk looped because my tension wasn't quite right. Um, I think it'll be okay in a finished product. I'm really happy with how round the yarn is. This one is Birds of a Feather from Alexandria, The Art of Yarn. Um, this one was kind of interesting. It was a I think it was a roving. Pretty sure it was a roving. I'd have to cross check all these. This was a roving and I stripped the colors. I separated them out into the colorways. It was it was an art dyed roving. I stripped out the colorways and then I blended on my hand cards with Angora, dyed Angora, and pulled those out into separate colorway rovings and then spun them in order. So in theory, this ought to be a self-striping yarn. Um, then I chain plied it so that it would basically keep the colors the way that they're supposed to be. I'm pretty happy with how that worked out. Not a huge fan of the finished product though. Um, it doesn't, it's not far off from the macaws, which were the, the inspiration. These were pre-prepared, um, these were pre-prepared roll eggs from Simply Squishy, and the I'm not even going to attempt to say this word. This is the name of the bird. Here's the pretty bird. <laughs> it looks like a cardinal, except that it's gray and red, not all red. Um, I blended this with Gotland, and, or not blended it, I, I plied it with Gotland. I am not 100% happy with how this turned out. It was actually a bad spin. It was That was not their fault, that was my fault. 
Um, their roll legs spun beautifully. I should not have plied this with the Gotland. It, it doesn't work. Um, it took it from a next to skin soft and turned it into like kind of lull. Um, it's a handsome yarn. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I mean, really, it's there's there is some elasticity to it. Very little. It's okay. This one was the Fiber Focus, which is Portland, which is a sheep that is raised in England. Not very much. And it came as raw wool, like raw locks, and it scoured easily. I got Scour Like a Boss from Mary Pavis Egbert, and I carded it on my hand cards and chain plied it. And it has the most wonderful, look at this bounce, look at this memory. Isn't that incredible? It has the greatest elasticity to it. Very, very happy with how round it came out. This is great sock yarn. And that's exactly what this breed was used for, is sock yarn and meat. I mean, they're, they're mostly a meat breed, but so happy with this. So I will probably do some kind of art dye with this. The last piece I have, please forgive me, I do not remember what this yarn was called. And it is what my mother is currently knitting this scarf from, and it's the edging on the hat here. Um, I blended that with alpaca. It was black alpaca, some angora, and some of the purple dyed Romney that I had. So I more than doubled what was in the package. And this is what came out of it. I'm extremely happy with the colorway um, that was on the blending board. And I, I just love it. I love the whole thing. Oh, this also has alpaca in it. It was a mystery fiber. I couldn't figure it out for a while. Turns out it was alpaca. So that is not the only thing I've been spinning, but that is the conclusion of the April 2019 spinning box. And I don't know how much I transformed my colorways or whatever, but I'm really happy with that particular collection of yarn. Um, you could see that it's not a tremendous amount, but it's not a small amount either once you get into um, adding other fibers into it and plying with alternative things like the the silk thread. If you can ply with that silk thread, just I don't know if you can see the sparkle on this. Where's we at it? So, in any case, very happy. Um, I learned a lot from this. Chain plying was a main thing. Blending and not being afraid to rip somebody else's fiber art apart. Um, two things that did not make it into this, which were intended to. This one right here is the was going to be plied with the kookaburra, and this is ended up being 100% angora chain plied, and it's all dyed by me. Um, various dyes. And then this one, which is again 100% Angora, just dyed red. Um, I ended up not using it to ply with, which was fine. And I just dyed it red and plied it back on itself. Well, plied it back on itself and dyed it red. Um, I have a ton of other stuff that I have. Um, oh, this was what it was supposed to be. I was going to do that. And I just didn't because the textures were all wrong. Um, I have spun a lot of other stuff, but this is the this is the sp April 2019 spinning box, Birds of a Feather. And if you get a spinning box, I can guarantee that your spinning your products will not look like my products, which is awesome. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.